Welcome to the Palm Beach Boat Show and we're about to take you on board the Amels 180. Now this is, I think, probably the most successful super yacht series the world has ever seen. The Amels 180 has sold dozens of boats, gone to some very, very happy private owners, but is also a hugely popular charter yacht in its own right as well. And I think you'll start to see why as we go on board. But let's hit you with a few statistics first of all. This is a 55 meter yacht built by the Dutch company Amels has a gross tonnage of around 671 and has a range, a proper transatlantic range of four and a half thousand nautical miles. The asking price for this boat, one of the last Amels 180s ever built, built in 2019, is 41 million euros. But not only are we going to be taking on a tour of this Amels 180 Papa, we're going to be doing so in the company of Burgess's head of brokerage for Asia, Mark Woodmansey. Now, Mark is an important character in this boat story. He was the broker involved in its new build. He knows the boat intimately. We could not find a better person to show us around this yacht. And we'll also be catching up with the captain who's gonna tell us a bit about how this boat's been cruising over the last couple of seasons. Anyway, without further ado, let's get you on board. Papa, I'm Carl Richardson and you're watching Yacht Buyer. Mark, good morning. Morning, how are you? Very well, thanks for having us on board. Well, welcome aboard Papa. Yeah. Beautiful sunny day in Florida. Beautiful here day. Here at the Palm Beach Boat Show. <laughs> yeah, and it's great actually to be on this boat. As I understand it, this is the youngest Amels 180 that's on the market at the moment, is that right? That's correct. Very good. Well, thanks for letting us on board and I guess it makes sense to start the tour here. Yeah. On, on the main deck. Yeah, so we're here on the, the main deck of um, the Amels 180 Papa. Bar on the entryway, stairs down to the, um, the, the guest accommodation, four cabins down there. Indoor dining with opening doors and balconies to give light and air uh, into this room if the, if the climate is suitable. Then we go forward into the owner's uh, area at the front there. And behind this, what, what is, looks like a door but is actually just a, a false door is the galley. Uh, and am I right in saying that not all Amels 180s have those balconies? No, I mean, it's because they've evolved this design over, um, over the years. Um, before, this was a door through to the galley, which right. allows service, but the, by having that passageway there, it, it decreases the amount of space in the, in, the, in the galley. And before, these would just be glass uh, windows, but people like air and, yeah. and um, light. And so by having the, the doors fold down, yeah. you get more light into the boat because the bullocks on the, on the outside do block the light to a certain extent. Yeah. And I mean, another you know, feature about this series, part of its success is the engine room is actually quite far forward in the middle of the boat, which right. is the correct uh, location yeah. from a weight point of view with the guest cabins aft. Hence, you know, so, so this is fairly unusual to have the stairways down through a main saloon. But as you say, that having the engines in the middle of the boat, the centre of gravity low and in the middle of the boat, that is, that's exactly where you want it for performance, right? So the, these boats are sort of inherently comfortable and stable. Yeah, natural stability mm. would always be the best. Low centre of gravity, weight in the middle of the boat, it's, it's, it's common sense. Okay, we'll move forward um, from the main deck saloon into the owner's area. Very good. We pass through this corridor, we've got an entryway out to the exterior decks and a day head in here. Mm -hmm. And there's a similar day head on the deck above. Yeah, important. We'll go into the uh, So we come into room. the owner's um, stateroom, which is, so this is the five cabin version of, mm -hmm. this, of this series. Um, many were built as six cabin boats. Um, this space here um, can be partitioned off mm -hmm. and there's boats with cabins in here, uh, small gyms, exercise rooms, right. uh, massage rooms. But um, it works very well. There's this lovely flow through this space, the office, bedroom and uh, bathroom and walk-in uh, cupboard. So I, have, I have been on a six cabin boat before. I think this makes, puts the stateroom on a completely different level, frankly. Yeah. And I think if you're using either for charter, you've still got those four guest cabins below sense, decks, haven't sure. you? So, yeah, very good. And then we'll move forward, shall we, into the actual stateroom itself. So in, in the owner's cabin, again, um, the addition of balconies, uh, which sort of appears later on in the Amels 180 series. Um, single put, press button, down she goes. So that, so that whole side op opens Holds out, down, yep. door opens back, and you've got your own private balcony. Yeah. Very good. Yeah, I so think a lot of touches in here. I mean, a lot of this furniture, I mean, the interior is done by Metrica, 
um, in the manufacture of the of the interior. Right. A lot of things like you know, these are Laura Sessas. She designed all of these uh, the door handles here. Right. Um, little t features like this actually this can it can rotate out if you don't have the lamp there and have a a tray. Yeah, it all feels very considered, doesn't it? it? All feels very you know neat and considered within the cabin. And you can see that within this design, that you can see that how much storage there is sure. as well sure. everywhere. Like you know, for you're spending weeks on board this boat. That's going to be important. But the other thing that strikes me where you are and where we were by the balcony is the amount of floor space still. You know, so we're forward on the boat, but you really feel that full it's beam. Space. Yeah. And we've got the, uh, the yeah, It comes through it into the bathroom. So it's got it all. I mean, bath, shower, and um, you know, all the facilities you need. Mm. One of my favorite pieces of artwork there with the, uh, the rabbits. Oh, yeah. Then we come through and it's got a nice large walk-in cupboard. And I understand there's quite a cool feature with the lighting here. Yeah, it's a nice little thing. So you just take out the main lights and you can yeah. see your clothes without having to open the doors. Yeah, I can see myself pondering here with the, uh, with the backlit closet. Yeah, that's, that's very glamorous. Right, well, let's go down and have a look at the guest accommodation on the lower deck. Let's do that. Let's head on downstairs. So there's two cabins similar to each other. This is after the boat. Mm -hmm. um, these are the largest two of the guest cabins. Right. And then two forward uh, with a slightly different layout. We'll go and see. But these are symmetrical, are they, these two? Symmetrical, yeah. and then the theme of the cut. So this was from Laura Sessa, this, um, okay. this color theme on top of the boat. And so the crew matched it with the, uh, the pillows and the, and the bedspread. And the art as well ties in, doesn't it, that we've got here as well. It all feels very cohesive, definitely. So these are these two aft cabins. These are like your VIPs. And then we have guest cabins, cabins forward. forward. Yeah. yeah, okay. So you have a living room through, uh, dressing room through there and then the bathroom. Yeah, and that's a good walk-in closet area. And just to be clear then, in terms of the layout, this is, this is what you would expect to find on an Amos 180. Yeah, they're actually all, all the same right. down here. You could either have uh, always all double beds or a combination of twins yeah. and Pullmans. Okay, should we have, go and have a look at those sure. uh, forward cabins? Forward. Okay, so we're here in um, one of the forward guest cabins. This one is a twin. Mm -hmm. And next door we have a double. And a nice feature about this is you can actually uh, connect these two cabins together um, for children, families, whatever it may serve as a purpose. Nice colour theme in here. All, all four cabins have their own unique colour, um, which I think is a nice way of uh, helping guests find their, their bedrooms. For charter, yeah, definitely. That gives them themes. So just so that door slides back. Just slides through. And then you've got a four berth. Yeah, bedroom. Yeah, so as you say, great. You know, if you've got kids or people want to be together, that makes sense. And was that... Is that standard Amels 180? No, it's always an event. It's, a, it's a choice. Um, you know, it's a compromise between sound insulation and, and, and access. So, but uh, useful. I mean, I think for a charter boat's flexibility and accommodation yeah. is really useful. So yeah. you can match what people, you know, people's sleep, sleeping arrangements. Um, uh, you know, the big challenge is you know, to match that with the boat's capability. So. Yeah, it's a good option to have. <laughs> So that's the lower deck. Yep, so I think we're gonna go up two decks to the bridge deck and there's a nice uh, saloon up there. And we're going to have a look. Okay. So here we are on the bridge deck lounge, the bridge deck salon. What really strikes me is again, this space here and also the amount of glass, but I believe that because this is a later 180, they've taken the width out a little bit more, or was that just on the 180 from the from the previous model? No, that's correct. The earlier uh, earlier editions of these boats, you'd have the walk around decks right here, and they pushed it to full beam, um, which gives this really lo lovely room. Yeah, you feel um, it, don't it's, you? Yeah, it's it's bright, but it's um, the wonderful colours from Laura. Um, yeah, the, these blues are really really um, pleasant space to be in. Yeah, we so we did a, a lot, lot of. Um, Time spent with the owner. I mean, he's a he's a guy who enjoys um, he enjoys sports and and uh, and activities. And typically, these boats will have a grand piano or something or in the corner. So we uh, 
decided to do something a little bit different here. Right. He likes to enjoy games, so we found him this beautiful uh, Babby foot table from this, Italy. It is easily the best table football I've ever seen. And uh, I think it's going to get a lot more use than the piano might have done. Okay. And I see there's a chessboard here as well. Yeah. And this is, yeah, it just feels like a salon that you would use, certainly. You know, you really feel that light coming through, don't you? And obviously then you've got these doors opening out onto the upper deck as well. So you've got that flow going right the way out onto the aft deck. Yeah, this has always been a wow room yeah. on, the Amos on the Amos 180 series, particularly when they pushed it to full beam. It's just, uh, yeah. you know, it's just, yeah, it's, it's a lot of pop for the room. Yeah. So. So you've won an extra, what, you've probably won an, at least a metre, if not more. You're probably winning close to two metres, I'd imagine, in terms of width, if you're losing both of those decks. Yeah. OK, so we're going to come through the back of house. And we've got the bridge deck pantry here. Where the guy's set up and ready to serve. and got a food lift that runs from the, you know, the galley one deck down all the way up to the sun deck. So right. it allows them to get food up or up to for, uh, food service on the upper decks. Right. And then we're coming forward, heading towards the bridge. We've got the stairs down through. This is the crew area. It's crew stairs down into the galley and their accommodation down there. Right. Uh, office uh, for the, you know, the captain and the, and the officers. And the captain's got his cabin in there, working hard away. Very we're good. Come through here into the bridge. Okay, so we're here on the bridge. Um, so the Amos 180, it's a 55-meter boat. Uh, has transatlantic range, right. which means it can comfortably cross the Atlantic yeah. um, at cruising speed. I mean, it's really the sort of, at 55 meters. It's a sort of boat that's yeah, the sort of starting point where it can go anywhere globally. You, you're never really having to think about shipping these boats on right. the deck of a container ship. Anything much smaller, you know, long passages become challenging. So they're a great, you know, um, first big yacht essentially. So this bridge you know, is very friendly for uh, you know, for not only the crew to use, but to have people enjoy coming up here, watching you know, how the, the boat is operated, talking to the captain, finding out what's going to be going on, mm. weather, where they're going, what's happening. So nice space with these two seating areas. Here. Yeah. Great view forward. There's also more uh, guest seating there, although I'm sure the captain loves it when the people <laughs> sat in front of him as he's trying to drive the boat. Yeah. But I do take your point, just feel like a very social helm. You've got seating for three or four people to each side and these big, deep helm seats actually mm. as well. You know, it does feel like this is a place you can spend some time in. So, and well then, and it, I mean, the crew spend a huge amount of time here. Absolutely. When this boat has been out to Asia and back again, it's crossed the Atlantic and back again. So it's, you know, real miles have been done. Yeah, so important, isn't it? And actually you making that point about how she's been cruised and the distances she's covered. And yet what we're looking at is a boat that feels like it's just come out of the factory. Mm. It's stood up very well to that it's use, isn't it? Well, yeah. Okay, well that's the, 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 that's the, uh, the home station on the boat and we finished the interior, so yep. we're going to head outside to the, the decks. Excellent. Let's go on deck. So this is a nice space because you've got uh, shade, but you've got obviously good airflow here yep. uh, over the boat and sunbathing pads and our two tenders. So the, the crane here in the center is also the forward mast. Boats of a certain size have to have a forward leading light and a aft leading light. Right. So that when they're uh, underway, they, that is just up with, and you'll see the light on the top. But it's also used, this is the guest tender, um, 7.3 meter uh, Whitmarsh made in the UK and uh, Williams Solas rescue tender, which is required for commercial yachts. Got it, yeah. Now we've got these great sun pads here. So this will be a popular air, I'm guessing, for private use and for charter. Yeah, I think, you know, sit, sit there, you've got the view boat forward and shade under the lip of the, uh, of the superstructure there. Yeah, I'm definitely appreciating the shade element, sure. having just come on deck now. So where are we going next? So we're going to the very large sun deck on this boat yeah. and two sets of stairs, which are useful for flow so the, the, um, the crew can access it without using the, um, you know, Hitting, hitting each other as they go up and down the steps. So we have steps upside, yep. upside of the boat here, up onto the, onto the sun deck. Go and have a look. So here we are up on the sun deck and I get what you're saying now about the space. I mean, we're standing here at the forward end, I'm looking back, this is a big deck. You won't find a bigger deck on a boat of this size. Right. So it's, it's one of the big, I mean, it's, it's a feature that everybody loves, all that space, yeah. good airflow over it in the heat. And it's just, it's got everything you need just a wonderful space to, to spend your time. Yeah, so we've got the spa pool here in the middle. In terms of what we're looking at, is this again sort of fairly typical of the 180? 
you when, when they build it, you've got a clean deck and you can choose what you put on here. So, I mean, you know, we're standing on a heli deck right. for touch and go operations. Right. They can put an EC135 on, on here. So, you've just got to get rid of the guardrails. Yeah. Um, we, I, we had a boat in Indonesia, did a huge amount of heli operations to get, getting on and off the islands. So, it's, yeah. And then going back, we've got you know, the pool, Tepe Bar and Grill, outdoor dining and then space for gym and a, and a pop-up cinema. Let's go and have a look. All right. So we've moved down from that slightly elevated uh, terrace area here, and we're now right in the, in the heart of the sun deck. And you were telling me about the, uh, so we've got um, a tempanyaki station here, bar, and then over here, is that where the top of the... Uh, so the food lift from, yeah. so you, they can send food from the, from the kitchen straight up here. That's where it and comes out. barbecue there. Um, so yeah, traditional barbecue, teppanyaki, yeah, and then the poor people here smelling that wonderful smell <laughs> uh, as the air pushes the boat, you know, pushes over the deck. Yeah, but this this is a great spot. We're having this bar area around yeah. here, and actually this uh, night this uh, is lit, so it's a really oh, nice feature. Yeah, very nice too. And then we have so this huge dining, dining area. table. Yeah, and then some of these boats have a lot of more structure here. Mm -hmm. but you just really wanted quite a lot of open space. So they, so some boats would have more fixed seating and yeah. what have you. Right, okay. So, but yeah, they just wanted to, everything here is movable. So you, gym, more gym, parties, dancing, whatever you want to do, very flexible. And actually they have a TV, uh, cinema screen that they can erect here. So you can watch uh, the movies oh, okay. at night. And, and I see there's a, a drop down drop television down TV here. there as yeah. well, yeah. So. But you do, I mean, the way that this particular owner has laid the bed out, you really do get the best of both, don't you? Because you've got so much seating everywhere, but you've also got this space that's allowed to, space, yeah. yeah. So you're allowed to enjoy the, the space. These teak decks are so pretty. They are. They certainly are. So where are we going to next, Mark? So we're going to carry on down, basically down through the decks, uh, all the way down to the beach club at the back. So we came up through what you were really calling the sort of crew stairwell. Yeah, that's more, more typically used by the crew. Right. And then the, the, the guests probably the more guest. likely to come up this way. But it is quite unusual to have those two stairs, well, isn't it's it? It's a central feature. I mean, right. yeah, yeah, one staircase up here is um, it's going to cause problems. So. Yeah. So those little details are so important, aren't they? Those practicalities. Practicalities, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, we'll go down to the uh, upper deck. That Great. makes sense. Okay, so we've come down. Uh, from the sun deck to the bridge deck aft. Yeah. Uh, and really the main thing is, I mean, upstairs on the, on the sun deck, you've got uh, great airflow over that deck. So hot climates, it's a cool place to be yep. out in the shade. But if you want outdoor dining, if it's cooler, you've got the protection here of the superstructure and these glass uh, panels here. So especially in the med end of season, beginning and end of season, um, people want to be outside. That's yeah. really what it's all about. But, but they, this... you do want the, the protection from the wind. Yeah. And this does feel like a great place to eat and just to yeah, convene, doesn't it, down here. And you were telling me about on these, this being one of the last Amals 180s built, there was a few very specific changes, including the... Pushing the deck out even further. Yeah, so it gives you that bit more sun deck space, but yeah. a bit more protection down here as well. Got it, okay. And again, we've got all this fantastic lounge space across the aft of the deck as well. And then in port, it's still quite private. In, yeah. in stern two, berthing in the med. You go up above, so the, yeah, you've got privacy from people walking on, on the dock. Yeah, I can imagine this being a place that's, especially with the owner under private use, this is a place that's going to be heavily For used. For dining. In, yeah. 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 So from here, we're going we're gonna to continue down. One more down. Deck, yeah. yeah, one more deck and we're into the main deck and then onto the beach club, right? Yep. Got it. Okay, so here on the main deck aft, um, you know, this is where you know, the access to the boat typically is either from a tender or from the the dock would be onto this space so yeah, people arrive, meet and greet the crew. Yeah. Normally standing here. Um, and it's the transition from the boat down to the oh, yeah. to the water. So in that respect it's a well trafficked area. Yeah. Um, An important area, but yeah, but like a transition area. Yeah. yeah. So we and we can head down to the swim platform and the beach club. Let's do it. Okay, well we're here in the water sports centre, so we've got great water access. And if we come down inside we've got the way it's jet skis and all, the, all the, the fun toys and equipment. Also inside is a steam room and a day head. So it's a great place to get out of the sun after you've been in the water. And you can wash down, shower up in the ceiling of the, of the, of the uh, hatch here. So Chris, thank you very much for bringing us down into the engine Welcome. bay. <laughs> You're the second engineer on board the boat. While we're here and while we have you, more importantly, can you tell us a little bit about the equipment 
that Papa has on board, some of those main okay. points. Um, Amos has Amos has five two main engines, so yep. here and here. Yep. The MTU 2000s, V16s. Right, V16. And then um, we've got two generators over on our port and starboard side. What size are they? So they're 160 kilowatts each. That's uh, some serious power coming out of those. Yeah, they're, they're reasonably. You run them both together or do you turn run we one? We tend to run one yeah. together. And then if you've got big load upstairs with guests, say they want jacuzzi, yeah. full whack sort of thing, yeah. then, we, then we can put them both on got it. generally. We sort of run one and yeah. then swap over. So if you're in full charter mode, you're in full generator That's mode. Right, yeah. right, okay. <laughs> and you've got water makers on board as well, We do, right? yeah. So Go over ahead. here on our port side. Yep. Um, they're each capable of 400 litres an hour. 400 litres an hour. So we can do a tonne of water an hour at sea. A tonne of water an hour but at sea. But when we're in charter mode as well, say we're emptying the jacuzzi a lot, for yep. moving around, there's three or four tonnes in the jacuzzi each time. So right. It takes four or five hours to, to catch up each time. So you're using that capacity. We're, we're using it, yeah, yeah, definitely. Brilliant. Well, thank you very much for letting us into your sanctum. You're welcome. Yeah. So as I said at the, uh, the introduction to our tour, we have a great opportunity today because we're going to have a quick catch up with Ollie, the captain of Papa, and really take up the story of her cruising life over the last 12 months and a little bit about before as well. So, Ollie, thanks for letting us on board, first of all. Yeah, absolutely, with pleasure. Uh, welcome aboard, Papa. Thank you very much. It's been a really impressive time. We went around with Mark earlier on, but great opportunity to have a chat with you and find out a little bit about the life of this boat, really. Sure. So, um, so Papa was originally launched in, in 2019 when she left the Amal shipyard in Holland. She sailed down to the Mediterranean, she had a hugely successful charter season. Um, on completion of that, she left the Mediterranean and she sailed to Asia. Um, she toured Asia extensively uh, and then unfortunately the pandemic came yeah. um, and she was, she was stuck in Asia for, for a few years. Um, eventually, uh, the yacht w was moving again. I ended up joining the vessel in January 2022. Uh, I joined it in Thailand. Um, we then set sail on, on quite a, a substantial passage back to Europe. It was around 8,500 miles to Holland. Um, we took the yacht back to the Amal shipyard. She completed her outstanding warranty. Um, and then for the summer of 2022, we were back in the Mediterranean. Again, we had a hugely successful charter season. Um, this winter, the yacht's been based in the Caribbean uh, and the Bahamas. And then looking forward to the summer of 2023, we'll sail the yacht back to Europe uh, and hopefully the Mediterranean season will be hugely successful for us. So Chef, thanks very much for having us down in your inner sanctum here. It feels like a good galley, but you've got to look after 10 guests, 13 crew. So that sounds like a lot of work to me. Tell me a bit about what it's like to be down here. So first of all, um we are, we are two to working in this galley, so mm -hmm. I have my sous chef. Yeah. So that's why this galley is pretty nice for this size of boat. So we can work here two or three people yeah. easy, um, not even to step on each other. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, thirteen people, like you said, I mean, can you you can see thirteen people here with uh, the guests is quite easy. To you work. say that. You say it's easy. Yeah. I think it's a lot of work. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I also have a sous chef, so that yeah. helped me a lot. So yes, this galley is a pretty nice because we have um, a very good equipment, yeah. a kind of professional equipment, not you know what you can have at home. We have a two oven here behind you. Yeah. We also have, I mean, the professional hoods, uh, the fryer, uh, plancher. Right. Yeah, and uh, here is very important this place. So here we have the heat lamp. Yeah. So when we cooked for uh, for the guest, we always keep you know all the food warm. So this one is very very important for me. Yeah. And we also have a uh, you know uh, the, the plate heater. So yes, we are quite have a quite good equipment. Yeah. In this galley. And I saw you have the the yeah. waiter system, so you can yeah. get the food upstairs. So yeah, the dumb waiter is very important for us because you know. Um, Sometimes it's difficult for the girls to go up, down, up, down, and also, you know, walking in the stairs with the, the plate is quite dangerous. Yeah. So we try to put, what we can do, we just put the plate inside the waiter and send it to the, uh, to the girls. So yeah. if they are in the sun deck or if they are in the project half, so you can, they can receive everything. Very and good. We also have a, a dry store in this boat. Okay. So the dry store is very important for us yeah. because you see, I mean, it's, for a chef, it's never enough. <laughs> we always want more and more and more. Yeah. So, 
Yeah. Well, also the guests want more and more and more as well, right? So. Yeah, all right. Yeah. Fair <laughs> enough. That's a good one, yeah. <laughs> Very good. Well, personally, I'm still very impressed that you can cook for 23 people in this space. I definitely couldn't do it, but it looks fantastic. It's beautifully kept. And uh, thank you for telling us all about it, mate. You're welcome, sir. Nice to meet you, nice chef. Nice to meet you too. Thanks a lot. Thank you, ever. So that was the Amels 180 Papa, and it does feel like we've had a real opportunity here, speaking with the build broker, speaking with the captain, and this boat feels like an opportunity, one of the last Amels 180s ever built, and it's presented immaculately. It's hard to think of a better 55 meter yacht on the market or not. Beautifully put together, as I say, and I've chosen to wrap things up here in the owner's stateroom. So yes, you can have an Amos 180 as a six cabin boat, and there's lots of good reasons for doing that, particularly for charter. But standing here, I can tell you there's a very good reason, many good reasons, but one particularly so, for having the five cabin boat, because this owner's stateroom, this lounge that we're standing in now leading through to the cabin is unequaled, I think, at 55 meters and probably at 60 meters as well. It really adds something to this boat. If you're looking for to use your boat privately, this makes all kinds of sense, but bear in mind, you've still got four really good cabins downstairs if you are thinking about chartering the boat out. So the Amels 180 Papa, what can I say? Just a beautiful example of Dutch engineering design and a yacht that's really intended for serious use with that four and a half thousand nautical mile range. That's the end. I hope you've enjoyed our tour. I've certainly enjoyed looking around this beautiful yacht. I'm Carl Richardson, you've been watching Yacht Bar, and if you'd like to see more of what we're doing on the Yacht Bar channel, please do click over here, and please do subscribe by hitting the button there. Thanks very much.